What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into the real of reality TV. This is going to be a conversation episode. I am behind the wheel and I am on the way to my business. But I was thinking about this arrest that happened over the weekend with Maurice Scott from Love and Marriage Huntsville. And it was reported that he was arrested for driving under the influence, DUI, around noon. Now, I'm no expert in DUIs, thankfully, but uh, (laughs) what in the world were you doing to be caught driving under the influence that time of day? Because most people that are caught driving under the influence, it's either late at night or early in the morning, but it's definitely not usually, I'm saying usually, when the sun is out, midday. So was he just partying so hard that he just got into the vehicle around that time of day? Is it possible that he was at someone's house and he left around that time? Like what really is going on? And inquiring minds want to know because this is now public information that's been put out there. They even posted on the neighborhood talk. I saw that they posted his mock shot over there. And the thing about this loser is he only gets, I know, you know, people may say, oh, the neighborhood talk in the shade room, they only post masks. But yeah, he's always getting posted over there, which I think maybe this is the second time. It's always because he's been caught up in some mess. The first time was when he did that interview that he did with Carlos King talking about, you know, the fact that he thinks it's noble that his wife rolls over and takes it, even though she was going through treatment and therapy and surgery to eradicate cancer from her body. And all he really was caring about was his bodily needs or desires, because they're not needs. And it's just disgusting. And that's why I got posted over there. And now his disgusting mugshot got posted over there. I have zero tolerance for people with the DUI situation. I, I It's like, I saw someone comment over there and I 100% agree. I think the person says something like, what do you guys have like Uber and Lyft restrictions where you can't call for a ride? Like, what is the deal? Because even if you can't contact somebody that you know, you could at least get a Lyft or an Uber. But if you are too sloshed, you're too inebriated to know if the person that's rolling up to come pick you up is actually with Lyft or Uber and you don't want to get in the wrong car, then what makes you think that you getting behind the wheel is a safe bet? So I just don't have any tolerance for that. But you know, someone who has been registered with the bar in their state and who has a license to practice law, it does not make them above the law. And it definitely doesn't make them beyond reproach and beyond doing things like this. Now, I know not every lawyer is guilty of doing these things, but let me tell you, I was a legal assistant for 12 years, years ago. And I didn't hang around any of these people, but I would hear the stories. I worked in small law firms and I worked in large law firms. And that was mainly when I worked in the larger law firms where there were so many attorneys working there. And then you had associate attorneys and all those things where you would really hear the rumors that would be going around. And some of them would be true, but you know, some of them obviously were not. But a lot of times the things that you would hear about these people would be true and going to the Christmas parties and seeing how they wow loud and whatever it it's not something that is unthinkable and I think it was last year in my in my state I'll say not in my city but in my state there was a well-known attorney who would practice well he did practice law but he was running commercials all the time on the radio and he would be doing these uh, sit-ins on these radio shows and answering questions where people would call in and ask questions about legal matters and he would answer them and he was doing that weekly for years and then just all of a sudden out of the blue 
he died and he was in his 30s and they said he died of a drug overdose i don't know what type of drugs he had in his system or what but these people who practice law and they are pretty much functioning addicts is not something that is uncommon i'm not saying that this is his case because i don't know him like that but i would not be shocked and surprised if he was a functioning addict and an addict of what because driving under the influence doesn't mean it's driving under the influence of alcohol it could be any controlled substance that causes your functions to be off so honestly it really makes me wonder what he was doing now, i know he was partying at the black cigar lounge with funky dineva and the crew down there i don't know if anything was being passed around besides the shot glasses but listening to funky dineva and the stories that he has shared about not his so distant past about the things that he has indulged himself in and how it seems like i wouldn't say that they're friends but they have become friendly funky dineva and the scott crew who knows if a mirror wasn't being passed around with some lines and listen i'm not saying that that happened but i'm saying it's possible because a dui is not just for alcohol it's for any controlled substance and so i'm really wondering what the case is with what was in the system and i don't know if we'll ever find that out i'm not going to dig the do the digging and the research to find out what the substance was that he was under the control of but i'm really interested to see where this goes but you know how they do it down there in huntsville this new season that's out right now it's just the first part so what he's going through right now, it, I'm quite sure will become a part of his storyline for the second part. But how careless and reckless is it and selfish for him to do what he did, having custody of his son at this point in time? I believe he was claim, claiming all this stuff about wanting to have his son down there with him and raising him. You know, uh, what kind of example is he setting for his son? It's, it's crazy. To me, it just looked like he was just trying to back out of having to pay child support. So yeah, let me have my son. Let me raise him. Let me have him under my care while I'm out here doing the most in these Huntsville streets and getting arrested for a DUI. I don't know if he was feeling depressed about that lawsuit counterclaim that he has against him right now and was trying to drink his issues and his problems away for the moment, which never helps because when you snap out of being drunk, the issues are still there. So I never understand people that do that, but it is what it is. People do that all the time. But uh, yeah, he caused all of this. None of those bloggers were thinking about suing him until he came for them first. It's like what people say, don't come for me unless I send for you. And he came for them when nobody was thinking about them and all out of ego because they did not apologize to him. He did not directly address them, but the videos were taken down. But because they did not issue a public apology, which is so stupid, he sued them. It's crazy. So now here he goes with a counterclaim for millions of dollars. I don't know where that's going to go, but ultimately I would love for it to be for the underdog. I root for the underdog. When they're right, of course. But I root for the underdog. And I feel that what he did, it was just him being in his pride, being foolish, standing in his ego, and wanting these women to bow to him. I'm not saying a man would even care anything about him, but I don't think that he would have went there if it was a man that did something similar to him. I really doubt it. I really doubt it. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about that for a minute, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section. 
I appreciate you being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say.